Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode of the Thoughtful Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm your co-host, Chris. And as mentioned, today's episode is going to be on charity and philanthropy and why it is a band-aid. Clearly, there are gaps in how our socioeconomic system functions, and unfortunately, some of those gaps are shoddily filled by the quote-unquote goodwill of those who have way more than your average person does. But hopefully we can expound upon that a bit today in our discussion. Should be a bit on the shorter side, but it'll be a good one nonetheless. Either way, let's get into it. So I thought it would be good to start off with some definitions. When we're talking about charity, we're not talking about goodwill that somebody might have towards their neighbors, like working at a food kitchen, stuff like that, where you're literally just directly helping and impacting somebody's life. We're talking about it more in a systemic sense, like charity organizations, the donations that come about uh, in this system infrastructure, and the reason why there are so many backside benefits that come about. So not not again the individual goodwill of person to person relations, but more as just a systemic whole. And philanthropy doesn't need that much of a caveat. Philanthropy is typically always done on a big scale, and there are always back end motivations to philanthropic actions. But Starting off with some definitions I think might help. Charity is quantified as an organization set up to provide help and raise money for those in need, or the voluntary giving of help, typically in the form of money to those who are in need. Note how both of these are revolving around money. Uh, For philanthropy, It is described as the desire to promote the welfare of others expressed especially by generous donation of money to quote-unquote good causes. So that is the definition of Webster's, but I think, again, we can get a bit more into those. So with charity in particular, it is spearheaded by the foundation of a lot of private organizations. These are charity groups, quote-unquote nonprofits, and a lot of organizations that, yes, might have good causes, for sure, like dealing with autism, Down syndrome, cancer, all kinds of diseases, disabilities, helping the poor and the downtrodden. Yes, those are good causes, and it's outright, but I think what is lacking is a systemic view of where these issues come from. If charity existed in its truest sense, it would be in this incarnation, where the system does not provide a baseline level of necessities to your average person, thus a lot of preventable diseases become rampant, The socioeconomic inequality forces a lot of people to have issues with food resources, access to health care, thus having to lean back on a willful system like charity or philanthropy. As mentioned in the title of this episode, it is a band-aid. It is another symptom of why the system does not function in its entirety to the betterment of of mankind. Yeah. I think that with problem being created by the system like you said if it's going to be, you know, actually fixed, you can't just go and and always rely on charity organizations because you're not actually fixing the root of what caused someone to need the charity organization. So like, you know, kind of what you were saying, just the idea of having to have a charity as, as part of our daily life is a sign of how like the way we run things has failures and those failures leave people with needs and then like you said they have to rely on you know some type of charity organization to fix those needs well a lot of people end up having to do that but it's it's if you were to look at what caused 
those things to happen and start attacking those type of problems instead at the root, you know, then, you know, in a perfect world, you would be able to eliminate the need for something like cherry. Yeah, and again, there's always kind of backroom motives as well. When it comes to charity, there's a lot of tax breaks involved, and rarely is it done just in a pure altruistic sense. Again, it's trying to plug holes in the system that shouldn't exist in the first place if the system was viable and cared about the aspect of public health in its entirety as the main mechanism of how the economy is oriented. But nonetheless, I think charity is definitely something that is is good, again, in the person-to-person relations, but as a system necessity, it, it highlights the weaknesses for sure. Again, because right. the, the poor and the downtrodden are just externalities in the system. It's something that is relied upon to exist in order to create the wealth imbalance and just the overall material imbalance that exists between the socioeconomic classes so it just kind of highlights that point yeah yeah and you and i had touched on earlier about like even though some of these things could be taken advantage of it's not you know how how we had trying not to just demonize the people who use the system and the you know what we'd view as negative ways like it's not like evil people or or malintentions always the the reason behind why this doesn't work, but it can be a part of it. And yeah, they, you know, they're trying to highlight just the idea itself of you know needing charity because this the system that we're in is causing these issues to to basically just return, return, need the charity. That's the actual problem. Yeah, if there's some moral sense of some millionaire or billionaire donating a lot of money to a certain cause. Yes, there might be some emotional good feels that come from that, but in reality, the system itself is is what's creating these things. Again, like we don't demonize capitalism as the socioeconomic system. We just merely point out that it is an outdated form of technology and social organization, and thus charity and as we touch upon philanthropy, are just tools in the toolbox of the captains of industry to really try and puff up their public image and to make, you know, make them feel good about what they're doing in the entirety Mm -hmm. of, you know, their work life or how they're kind of holding themselves. And it's just a way that ends up getting twisted for the benefit of those at the top. And yes, it. I'm not saying that there isn't any positive outcomes, but the positive outcomes would be a regular occurrence if the system was viable, as opposed to something that somebody has to rely on by chance of, of money being in a charity, and then you having somebody who is benefiting from the charity. It's it's just a really convoluted way of dealing with issues. I like the way you put that, actually. Yeah. And it always does come back to the money because the, the common denominator across these definitions is, is like it's not even having to do with the person helping out. It's money put towards something, both like uh, in charity, you know, an organization set up to ride and raise money. Boom. There you go. And then philanthropy, promote the welfare of others, especially by generous donations of money. It's literally just like throw money at it, you know, that we're, we're good people. We throw money at it. Yeah, exactly. Again, it it's trying to foster that sense of up. Oh, I I did something as opposed to looking deeper to what might have caused these issues in the first place. And that mm-hmm. that is something that we try and highlight here on the podcast. Always try and take a root cause approach and to try and dig deeper to the issue besides just personal responsibility or Somebody was just born in this downtrodden scenario and they have to work their way up out of the ranks or whatever. No, I mean, mathematically, the majority of the human population globally are going to exist on the lower socioeconomic scale because that's how free market capitalism functions. There will always be a large deficit between those at the very top, those at the very bottom. And unfortunately, 
again, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, there is always going to be the majority of people on that lower echelon as opposed to those at the top. I think with philanthropy, it focuses a bit more on the individual aspect, but it is really only done by those at the very top. So charities can be organizations or just individual causes, but philanthropy is done by individuals. And even more so than charities, it is meant to, again, puff up the image and the ego of those donating to a certain cause. And yes, while somebody might donate $50 million to help build a school or something like that, they're going to get the recognition of having their name, you know, in the title of the school. And they're going to end up being like a founder and they might be on the board of, of some organizational infrastructure of the school, something like that. There's always going to be even more of a benefit to the individual as opposed to just the outright success of some organization. And you can extend that to many other things, not just schools, libraries, hospitals, statues, parks, you name it. Anything involving philanthropic endeavors is going to have that, that outcome in the end. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually just a very selfish type of motivation sometimes, you know, just to have your name on it. Like you said, I mean, and the, the, there are good, there's always going to be like good seeds out there that still happens, you know, and the, for, for what little bit of good that, you know, some philanthropy can cause, it's like you said, usually still going to have like somebody getting their name kind of buffed up behind it, or in some cases just entirely so that they could get that reputation, get the, get the freaking perks that come with, you know, dropping a bunch of money into something and be notarized for it. Or you could even look at, like, organizations that are founded by individuals to kind of act as the de facto way that these people interact. Like, I guess the, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or something big like that would be a good example. It both acts as a charity and is a philanthropic endeavor in, like, one kind of package. and their whole gig is like helping those in Africa get like access to fresh water and mosquito nets and all that kind of stuff. But again, it doesn't dig deeper to why these people might be in those kind of situations. It is merely them having an outcry towards, you know, Oh, it's so tragic that this is occurring. You know, well, again, we're going to throw some money at it and hope that something gets done yet. They're still, in downtrodden situations. Yeah, they might be a little better because they now have access to water and protection against malaria, but the overall situation of a certain society or group of people has relatively remained the same. They're they're just not absolutely dying of thirst now. <laughs> right. Another one of those. Let's just put a Band-Aid on it. Like, yeah. they're, kinda, they're fixing what looks like is the actual problem when we all know they have the real means to like go and fix the six problems deeper down the domino chain of issues that would set these people up to be better anyway. Because, you know, it's kind of just a sham. Yeah, and there's no incentive for the situation to be improved. There's always an incentive to, again, kind of puff up the image of, of some individual who's at the top or to help promote an organization that you are a key player in but overall as long as the optics are there everything else is kind of secondary so it's very much an exemplification of how this is really being turned into something that again is is separate from just individual goodwill or you know, really helping prop somebody up in your community or your neighbor or something like that. It is merely, again, another tool in the toolbox that the captains of industry have to really kind of perpetuate their their brand and uh, try and make themselves look good in the public eye. And you know, that does actually just bring up a good note. Always research your your charities or what you're going to donate to because there are good ones. 
I, I believe that there are good ones out there, but it's worth looking up how it is and, and what they're actually doing. Yeah, and I mean, a Band-Aid is better than no Band-Aid. Like, charities do do good work, but again, just like a lot of conversations about how the world can be improved are focused around in its existence, there's nothing that references why these issues are occurring at, at the root cause again. It mm-hmm. it never looks any deeper than, here's a problem, throw some money at it, get a few people together, and we'll see what we can do. Like, you know, money is merely a resource to be exploited in this aspect, and is not the most efficient way to sort of orient these interactions. Because again, it's it's an antiquated way of of doing economics, but yeah, it's uh, again it just belies issues that uh, people don't really tend to look too too deep at. I mean, I think that that about covers the both charity and philanthropy. Yeah, and I think just touching on more of the overall systems approach. So again, with with looking at a viable system that is modeled off of nature that looks towards public health as one of the main metrics for systemic organization it's it's going to be the first objective in a system like this to help meet the needs of the individuals uh, whether it comes to healthcare housing food water you know w- whatever it is energy information access, all of these things are going to be front and center as opposed to the current paradigm where it's just focused on money acquisition. And I think highlighting how, again, with the title of this episode being it, you know, these two aspects being a band-aid, there very much needs to be uh, sort of a galvanization as we kind of talk about on this podcast where these things are are beneficial but it's also a sign these things are also a sign of what's wrong and i think now that we can kind of recognize these issues and look towards like hey you know we do have millions and millions of people dying of of certain forms of cancer every year or we have this large swath of the population that has mental health issues or are poor and don't have access to food like it it really sticks out like a sore thumb these these systemic issues and again if if charity and philanthropy are the only ways the system really deals with these things maybe with a little governmental intervene like intervening here here and there but, you know, largely, if this is the way that the system deals with these things, again, it's just another nail in the coffin that shows it's not meant to meet the needs of every human being. It is meant to be a game. It is something that some people win, a lot of people lose, and there's always going to be this sort of spread of the population that is going to be the really big winners and the really, really big losers. And unfortunately, most of us are going to be in that losing category, especially with the absurd wealth imbalance. You know, you have people like Elon Musk, again, the Bill Gates, people like that that just own more money than than billions of people combined. It just it, it blows your mind to think of something like that. So for next week. Again, we're getting closer towards the end of the Foundations playlist here. We're going to be talking about some more broad topics, which is going to be culture, sociology, and ethics. I think with those being sort of larger order issues and more of a discussion about the zeitgeist of what's going on right now, I think it'll be a really good episode to tie in. And then after that, we just have two more episodes and then we'll be sort of shifting the focus a little bit here with the podcast. It's been a long time, but we're actually getting pretty close. Yeah, man, it'll probably be close towards that six month point where we really start to get into the solutions aspect of things after we 
again, lay down the framework for how uh, a lot of these discussions should should be had. Gotcha. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it, everybody. So again, we're just highlighting why these issues are being solved in such a nebulous way and why it's not just dealt with by the system as a whole. I think pointing these things out once more are just indicators of why the system is failing and has failed and how, yes, it is a slight benefit as opposed to people just being in absolute desperation. But again, it's it just belies a larger issue. But we will be catching y'all next week for the discussion about coach culture, sociology, and ethics. But have a good one, everybody. We'll catch you next time.